Hey, this is Jordan Hall, former Indiana Hoosier. Keep up with Indiana Sports on Indiana Sports Beat. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Friday, October 11th, coming to you from the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios. It is certainly a soggy bottom day. Tom Brew from Sports Illustrated Indiana joins us now. Tom, I was just talking about the fact that this confidence, when you hear people like Taiwan Mullen and uh, Michael Penix talk, they're extraordinarily confident, not cocky, but very confident, and it's not feigned. It is real. They completely believe in themselves and what's going on, and the success that they're having is not a shock to them because they believe in their talents, and it's coming through on the field. There's no doubt about that, and I think a lot of that has to do, of course, is from where, where they come from. You know, when uh, when you play high school football in Florida, you know, you already get the opportunity to play against a bunch of Division One players, you know, almost every Friday. And it's, uh, you know, these guys have been through the wars. Uh, they have played a lot of, you know, they've gone deep in the postseason runs uh, in Florida as high school players against, you know, very good players. And, uh, you know, and, and when they've had success at that level, they feel like when they come here that, you know, uh, they want to play. You know, they're they're not about just sitting back and waiting and watching and learning. You know, they want to get on the field, and uh, you know, and we're certainly seeing that. You know, from you know from a lot of freshmen. You know, that they're, that they're stepping up, and a lot of these young guys in this last class or two, uh, they're not. You know, they're they're not the least bit intimidated by any of this. And, you know, they're still making some mistakes here and there, but I mean, like Taiwan Mullen is is a perfect example. I mean, he's been. He went against, you know, the number one receiver in the league and Daryl Stewart at Michigan State and never blinked an eye. You know, he just – the kid was just ready for all challenges. And uh, you got to love that. You know, you got to love that kind of swagger, and you know, in your cornerbacks for sure. Yeah, I was talking about Taiwan. I mentioned that, you know, he, he's got a brother that, that's currently playing for the Oakland Raiders and a cousin named Lamar Jackson who's quarterbacking the Baltimore Ravens and has a uh, Heisman Trophy in his closet. He grew up playing against that kind of talent. So this is not a, a, a bigger challenge for him. It's a challenge that he's already suited for. But that comes along with this better recruiting that Tom Mallett's doing. When you get these type of players coming from these type of environments, that spreads and permeates to the entire team. And that's a difference between an Indiana and and a Penn State and Ohio State. That's what they have been recruiting for years and years and years, and that's where that culture comes from. Sure, and they're not all the way there yet, obviously. But uh, you know, it's you know we see the improvement, you know, and that's based on you know classes that are parentally ranked, you know, thirteenth or fourteenth in the Big Ten year after year. So you know now to move up, you know, to the you know to eighth and ninth, and you know be one of the top thirty five classes in the country. I mean that's it's dramatically better, but it's also not good enough, you know, and, you know, the coaches will tell you the same thing that, you know, that level of recruiting they're at now, they want to take that the next step further as they go forward. And I think the more they recruit good players and the more other good players see them having success here, you know, then, you know, that makes a world of difference. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing, you know, is, you know, is to start to win as well. I mean, that's why, you know, when you saw, uh, you know, saw how emotionally spent those guys were after the Michigan State loss, I mean, it mattered to them. You know, they had, they went up to Michigan State to win a football game against a team that's tough as hell to beat at home. And uh, when they didn't do it, when they were so close and had a lead in the fourth quarter and didn't do it, I mean, they were definitely very, very upset that they didn't, you know, finish the deal. And, uh, you know, to me, that all comes from a lot of this, this attitude and this swagger from a lot of these younger kids that are like, Hey, you know, we, you know, we, we did not come here to be part of, you know, four and eight, three and nine type programs. We came here to win. And, uh, and you're, we're seeing that, you know, and it's like, you know, I think next, you know, we'll start to see some of the results. And I think that certainly, you know, is something we're going to see in the next month, you know, and, uh, and we'll see, but uh, they're definitely uh, a fun group to watch. Uh, They're enormously fun to cover. I mean, these are, uh, these are good, funny, talkative kids with intelligent things to say, and uh, you know they've been uh, they've been a real pleasure to be around the first half of this season. Yeah, this next four games is a stretch for Indiana that uh, is not going to make or break the season. Is what I'm saying, but it's going to uh, give them a platform to 
stand up and say, hey, we are a, a Big Ten team that is going to be uh, challenging any and all comers. It starts with an easier contest this Saturday, a uh, noon homecoming contest against Rutgers, in which Indiana is a 27.5-point favorite. That is the biggest margin Indiana has ever had placed on it as far as well, from a wagering standpoint in a Big Ten game. Indiana, to me, needs to make a statement this weekend that they are one of those Big Ten teams, and they need to cover the spread uh, from a statement-making standpoint, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't really get caught too much into the, into the point spread thing, but I mean, I certainly – think they need to go out and and continue to prove uh to themselves and to others you know that they can they can be uh a better than a bottom of the barrel team in this league because it's uh you know because what they what they've done against inferior opponents so far has been impressive you know they they've you know eastern illinois 52 to nothing connecticut 38 to 3 they were better than them and they put their foot on their throats and they kept it there for 60 minutes and uh you know, and that's what, that to me is what needs to happen uh, on Saturday. And it's like, you know, quite, you know, and, you know, to me, four touchdowns probably, you know, isn't enough because the structure's team is a mess. And, you know, I really do expect Indiana's offense to, you know, be able to move the ball. And, uh, you know, and that's what I want to see. You know, I want to see some more, uh, uh, some more pinpoint passing um, you know, down the field. You know, I want to see, uh, you know, some more explosive plays come out of the running game. I just want to see all that. Uh, start to emerge and of course you know the defense has been very good in these games against teams that struggle and uh, you know a shutout or close is uh, is what I would expect as well and uh, and obviously the most important thing is that everybody stays healthy. Uh, and coming off of a bye week, they've had two weeks to rest up and 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 heal up, and and for Michael Penix to get tuned up even more so because he hasn't had a ton of snaps uh, because of injury uh, mainly. He he's been limited, but showing very effective. But this will give him an opportunity to uh, step back into gameplay. Unfortunately, he's probably only going to going to going to get to ha- play half this game. Uh, I don't expect to see him past halftime. Well, a lot of it just depends how quickly they do score. But, yeah, I mean, I'm in the same boat. I mean, to me, if he plays well and they're winning 35 to nothing at halftime, that's mission accomplished in my book. You know, I'm not a big fan of him him needing 30 more reps in a blowout situation and having, you know, worrying about him getting hit or getting hurt or, you know, or having more issues with that shoulder. I mean, it's we need him to be able to play – you know, the rest of these big games for Indiana, he needs to be out there on the field. And, you know, there's, you know, there's to me absolutely no sense that once Indiana's up four or five touchdowns in this game for him to be out there. I really don't think so. Cause he's a, he's uh yeah, I don't want to ever call him fragile, you know, but you know, it's, but he's had, you know, he's had a torn ACL his freshman year and then he's had the shoulder injury that, you know, cost him two and a half games already this year. So it's, you know, there's no sense in risking him getting hurt if we don't have to. No, I don't. That's my point. I don't expect to see him past halftime because it is expected to be a blowout. The only bad thing is he hasn't taken that many snaps, and he can sure use the reps. Uh, but he's not going to get him in this game, doubtfully, because uh, right. Indiana's would but that's probably where I be up. By. I, that's where I disagree with you. I don't think he needs to have those extra game reps and be exposed to getting hit in a game situation, especially when it's a route. I mean, it's go out there, do your job, get your thirty-five, forty reps in, and then be done. You know, there's. There's no sense in exposing him to 60 or 70, you know, and, and, and running the risk of getting hit. You know, to me, if they have, if they get a good week of practice in where they've done everything they need want to do with him anyway, and then he goes out there and performs well and has four or five scoring drives, whether well, if that takes a half or two and a half quarters, that's, that's fine with me. It really is. I don't think just the idea of getting reps alone uh, supersedes anything else. I'd rather keep him, go out there, do your job, be done, and then move on. A couple of things Indiana needs to improve on is defensively, uh, just defensively, period, not get, not giving up big plays, but also continue. They need to continue to develop this road game, uh, running game. I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to, to see from a, an opponent like Rutgers, but uh, it's a, certainly a starting point for them on both sides of that ledger to, to get both of those improved. Absolutely. Um, the running game has been, you know, um, a disappointment all year and it's and quite frankly to me been a little bit of a surprise because I thought with that veteran line and Stevie Scott coming back and plenty of depth in that running back room that they would have success and they haven't really broken that out yet and that's uh, you know like, do I think it's possible at some point that they can become a better running team I think they I think they can 
And, you know, as near as I can figure, Jim, I think maybe a lot of it is is still just sort of the new scheme uh, with Kalen DeBoer and some running plays that, uh, you know, that, you know, that they're still not, you know, a hundred percent, you know, having everybody doing the right thing at the right time. It seems like there's been a lot of plays, you know, where, you know, four guys on that offensive line will do the right thing. And then the one guy who misses his block is right where that running back was going. You know, I think, I think we've seen a lot of that, you know, early in the year where this offensive line has not played as well in the running game as we thought they would. So, <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully, hopefully we'll see that improve on Saturday and uh, it'll kind of need to be that case because there's uh, uh, there's a few defenses coming up down the road here that uh, are pretty good against the run too and you know it's, you know, and it's like I don't mind though that you know when they've seen that it's going to be difficult to run against teams they've they've gone to this short passing attack which are you know this perimeter game which is basically a glorified running game anyway and they've had a lot of success with that and you know it's uh, I think when we look at the big picture if we get if we take those rushing yards along with those short quick passes then, and add all them up, you know if they're coming if that adds up to a decent day then that's that's fine with me. Absolutely, and they all also would be uh, doing uh, themselves a favor if they can get the secondary locked down again. I'm not sure how much of a test they're going to get this week. We've had some great bright moments on it with, with people like Taiwan Mullen doing a phenomenal job, but there's also been some some uh, big plays allowed on that on that end back side of the ball and. Hopefully they can get that short up because as they get deeper into Big Ten play, they're going to get tested more and more. Yeah, well, I think Taiwan Mullen's been their best cornerback for sure by so far, and uh, uh, there's been you know the other guys have been beaten on a few plays, and you know it's like I'm I'm trying my best to not hold too much against them for that Ohio State game because that was just uh, just a heck of a performance by Justin Fields and that Ohio the entire Ohio State offense. You know and they've been doing that to everybody, so it's uh, you don't you don't excuse Indiana for that, but they are Ohio State is literally destroying every single team they play. So it's you could maybe you know bunch it in the, with the fact that you know that they may they might be the best team in the country right now and, uh, and leave it at that. But yeah, it's all about improvements. I think you know a lot of what's been talked about this week in uh, doing a lot of self scouting and reevaluating is that you know Indiana also needs to get a little bit more pressure on the quarterbacks, and I think that will help some of those issues in the secondary as well because. Especially a lot of those uh, you know, longer passes against Michigan State that they completed, and that was because Brian Lewerke sat back there for several seconds, you know, scanning the field and finding, waiting for guys to pop open. You know, it's like I think you know with a little bit better pass rush, you know, we'll see the secondary play better too. Absolutely, Tom Brew. What do you got coming up that the people need to know about? Well, we've got a lot going on today. We got. Uh, uh, did a nice little video on the new uniforms that uh, the Hoosiers are going to wear tomorrow. Kind of, you know, kind of different and unique. And uh, and then through the three things that I want to see from the game, a lot of that we've talked about here uh, is going on. And then, uh, you know, starting on Saturday, we're going to do something different on game days now. We're going to have a live thread going from an hour before the game through the end of it where people can talk and chat and uh, interact with me uh, throughout the game. You know, so it's uh, – uh, as, as the site continues to grow and there's more and more people involved now, looking forward to doing that for the first time tomorrow. And, uh, of course, the usual full coverage of everything, uh, game stories, columns, opinions, pictures, the whole shebang tomorrow on game day. And then, of course, we're just a few weeks out from basketball, too. We've got uh, a lot of plans in the works for a lot of big stuff coming up near the end of the month with basketball as well. You know, one thing I almost forgot, Cole Guest uh, entered the transfer portal for Indiana. Uh, kind of a loss or Indiana's deepest, probably one of their deepest positions, but still kind of a loss of a good player. Well, and more and, and a good kid too. But, uh, you know, I think he sees the writing on the wall. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's uh, got, you know, a sophomore in Stevie Scott ahead of him. He's got a true freshman in Samson James who's passed him by. Um, you know, he's basically the fourth running back right now, and uh, he's not going to get a whole lot of touches. And, you know, if he feels like uh, he, he needs to go somewhere else, I understand that, and that's what that transfer portal is all about. You know, if it's if it's not a good fit for playing time here, then he should then he should go somewhere where he can where he can get some more carries. And maybe that's at a different level. Who knows? But uh, he's certainly a good kid and been a good locker room kid, and everybody's loved having him around. So it's sorry to see him go, but uh, you know those things happen in college football, and uh, you know you, what you want for him is an opportunity to play somewhere. And uh, if he's not going to get that here, I certainly give him uh, every. Uh, I give him, you know, wish him well, you know, wherever he winds up going. Absolutely. Tom Brew from Sports Illustrated Indiana, thanks a lot for joining us.
You're welcome, Jim. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you at game day on Saturday. Hey, thanks for listening to the rebroadcast from today's edition of Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle, the only daily show dedicated to Indiana University athletics. You can catch us live each weekday on indianasportsbeat.com, thedailyhoosier.com, gruelingtruth.com, or go to spreaker.com for live notifications. Yeah, that's speaker with an R, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. You can also catch the entire show any place you listen to a podcast, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, etc. You can find and follow the show on Facebook or follow me on Twitter at Jim Coyle ISB for complete coverage of the Indiana Hoosiers. Thanks again. I hope you have a great day. I'm Jim Coyle and I will see you on the radio.